Dragons have become the heart and soul of so many of our favorite novels, films, shows, and more. And I like to think that the physical depiction of these fantasy creatures is greatly influenced by animals we find on our planet. One of them absolutely has to be, without a doubt, the Red-Eyed Crocodile Skink. And I mean, hey, let's be real. Every time I post one, someone says, oh look, it's Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. I mean, am I wrong? You know I'm right. You were probably thinking it before I even said it. Admit it. It's true. So, you've been watching my content for some time. You're familiar with Project Mini Dragons. You know that I've been working with these beautiful animals for the past, what has it been now? Seven, eight years? Unbelievable, I can't believe that. And you've considered owning your own. You made it to the pet store or a reptile show and they're offering them on the table. What are the next steps you need to take? In today's video, we're going to cover how to properly acclimate a red-eyed crocodile skink. Mind you, I should say this is applicable for the wide-eyed crocodile skink as well, Tribulonotus novaginia. However, the focus here is on the red-eyed crocodile skink. So, let's get started. And I'm not playing around here. This video is really necessary, and I'm calling people out. Well, not specifically, but I'm calling you out. You'll see what I mean. You see, the reality of the situation is that there are still very few people who are actually putting in the time and effort to reproduce these animals in captivity, which then means that the majority of animals available on the market today are unfortunately still wild collected from Indonesia, Papua New Guinea. I spend loads of time encouraging you all to support captive breeding. If you want any species that I keep on this channel, I always want you to support someone who's breeding them in captivity, purchasing captive bred animals, not only because they're more healthy, because it helps perpetuate a captive population, and that's how it has to be. We shouldn't be supporting our interest in keeping these animals by collecting wild animals. Initially, sure, there needs to be some representation coming from the wild, and those animals need to be systematically reproduced. Sorry guys, I'm gonna be very clear. I have a pretty bad cold right now, but the show must go on, so that's why I sound all congested and nasally, and I'm kind of losing my breath. The point is, this video is necessary. So, in this box, friends, I actually have two wild-caught red-eyed crocodile skinks that I've purchased, because I've come to terms with the reality that the majority of you working with these animals who have wrote, uh, there's many of you have written me and, uh, and said, oh, my red-eyed crocodile skin's not eating, I was told it's captive bred, da 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 And then I asked more details and it's very clear that it wasn't. Be mindful, if the price is low, there's a good chance that they're not captive bred. Today we're going to go over how you are to acclimate, rehabilitate, and have success with red-eyed crocodile skinks so you all can be part of the community that's going to establish these animals in captivity. That is the purpose of Project Mini Dragons. So, as I mentioned, we have a box here that I just ordered. If you want to learn how to acclimate these animals, let's get started. If you enjoy Project Mini Dragons and you'd like to find a way to support what I do here, the easiest and best way you can do that is by watching the videos all the way through commenting, giving them a thumbs up if you enjoyed them, and if you want to take it a step further, you're welcome to purchase Project Mini Dragon merch, which directly goes into me setting up new tanks, feeding the animals, and medicating them, treating them, visiting Dr. Brown, you know, that whole thing. It helps, and you get to rep the project. So, thank you very much for your consideration and supporting, it means a lot. So you want to acclimate some red-eyed crocodile skinks that were sold to you as captive bred, but are actually wild caught. All jokes aside, uh, you know what I mean. Adding some humor to this. We're gonna need a few things. Rubber gloves. We're gonna need some paper towel. Very important. Most likely, or possibly I should say, you may need some colloidal silver gel. Silvazorb ointment, not the spray. We want the gel, the good stuff. Ooh, look at that. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the video description to colloidal silver gel. Important. Q-tips for application. You'll understand soon. Next, got a bunch of goodies here. We have a hide here. Two worm dishes for the animals to feed from. Two water dishes. Oops. 
what got in there. Anyway, water dishes, another hide because we're acclimating two skinks. And this is going to be used as a, a little bathing station because the animals are covered in soil. And then housing. For housing, I've made these quarantine bins. All I did is I cut out, you can use a hot knife if you want. I went all crazy and just used a little knife and made a very uneven incision here and cut this out. And then I glue gunned, I used a glue gun to, uh, to glue in the mosquito mesh screen here. I'll put links down in the video description to as much of this stuff as I can. And uh, yeah, and then we just glue gunned around. I also drilled some holes beside it for added ventilation. And I don't know that you really need to add cross ventilation. You could add a little bit if you wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. There's two bins like this for two animals. And then next, a scale, because you need to be able to weigh your animals regularly and check on their weight. We want to be monitoring that their weight is going up or at the very least not going down and is maintained if they're already at a healthy weight. So a scale that does grams and is fairly sensitive. You get a small food scale, very important as well. So with that all being said, we can begin our process by unpacking our skins. We're going to be wearing some gloves just for the sake of being as sanitary as possible in the process. We don't know exactly what we're dealing with when we unbox these. So perfecto. Okay, so we got our skinks here. Here's our box. We have a little heat pack on the side, way off to the side, because you do not want crocodile skinks getting too hot. So here we go, guys. Oh, okay, we have our first one. Wow. And right away, I see something to be a little concerned about. You see that? Well, we'll look more closely after, but definitely concerns from the get-go. But these otherwise seems like a very healthy animal. Here's the second individual. Hello there. Ooh, sorry, that styrofoam sound is very unpleasant. Okay, so let's have a closer look at each skink. I'm gonna start with this individual here. So here, we want to give each animal a good once over. And if you have the opportunity to do this before buying your skinks, I would advise you to do that. There's no harm in doing that when, if you have you know, multiple individuals to choose from. So right off the bat, we can see that this animal is a bit younger and they're not full grown, but also they're a bit lean. Uh, yeah, so you can see that the, the base of the tail going down, very thin, not a lot of uh, weight and size on this tail. So this animal is more of a, uh, an alarm sounding as far as uh, what we need to watch out for. Now they're pretty dirty, so we can't really tell what's truly going on. But first of all, I will point out that you see this mark on, their, on the side of this animal's body. I don't know what that is, if it's a sore. She seems a little bit sensitive to the touch there, so I'm not gonna poke at it too much. Again, we're gonna wanna clean this animal off and have a more close look at that and if need be there may be some vet attention involved with the beloved dr alec brown so otherwise you know alert we love to see that clearly has some spunk she's trying to i say she i'm not even sure but uh yeah it's a girl but i mean again there's so much substrate caked on the lizard we're gonna give them a quick bath okay so we're gonna put the animals aside for a moment i want to set up the enclosure so that they can be transferred directly into them immediately after being checked out. Okay friends, so we have our bin here. This is the quarantine bin. A little cricket chew mark. I could patch this out, but I assure you there's nothing to worry about. No skinks climbing up the side of the wall and getting out of that. At least not today, so I can fix it later. We're going to set this up. Now, with the bins, uh, I have tried a few different things. I have tried putting soil in here. I've tried putting paper towel in here. And some of you may be shocked that I recommend you use paper towel as a substrate. The reason for this is because your crocodile skinks will rummage around in here if you have soil and they're going to constantly knock their water dish or spill water, splash water, and your substrate's gonna get soggy. And over time, it's gonna harbor bacteria and you do not want soggy substrate. Despite how you may think these animals like to be in wet soil and have a humid, moist environment, it's not really the case. They need to be able to dry off well to avoid bacterial infection. So what I found, because there's sort of limited ventilation already, having dry paper towel 
Sure, it's allowed to get moist here and there, and it will get wet and soak up that water, but having dry paper towel as a substrate, the hide, a few flake plants, and a water dish is the perfect way to keep these animals. And then every time you find feces or the substrate gets too wet, clean it up, replace it, keep it very, very clean at all times. That's gonna be our quarantine process. So simple, two sheets of paper towel, just like that. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is add our hide, which will go just like that right here. And then we're gonna put in a water dish. I'm gonna fill it first. Now with crocodile skinks, what's important for these animals, I've heard is that you wanna use reverse osmosis water. I don't know how true this is, but someone once commented on my video saying that she's adamant that these animals require reverse osmosis water or demineralized water. She found that offering them hard water led to uh, urinary or kidney issues. So I would strongly also recommend using reverse osmosis water and then obviously supplement their diet correctly with a multivitamin, a calcium supplement. Uh, I believe it because if you think about it, a lot of Indonesian species have similar issues. If you think about uh, cat geckos, for example, they are also species that everyone says you have to use uh, reverse osmosis or distilled water with because they will get sick over time from being given hard water. So reverse osmosis, uh, I forgot to mention it at the start, but we're also going to add a few fake plants, literally just the one, this is a big fern I got here. I'm just gonna go here like this, so the animal has an added sense of security around the hide, and they can climb around on it. It's very simple, because again, this is a quarantine bin after all, but we wanna make them feel safe and secure. And then lastly, we have a mealworm dish uh, that will go on the opposite side, and I'll show you how that works and why it's so important to use these for acclimating crocodile skinks. That my friends, is our setup. Very, very straightforward, easy peasy, lum and squeezy, whatever you wanna say. That's a crocodile skink bin right there. It doesn't get any easier. This is where the animal will call home for the next few months. Now we're literally going to repeat this process. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole thing again. As long as they're shedding well, eating everything else, this is humid enough for them, trust me. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, is there a species in the hobby that you think is greatly underrepresented that needs to be systematically bred in captivity? Which one would you choose and why? I wanna know what you would pick as a passion project or which species resonates with your heart and passion that you would want to keep and work with in this capacity. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, everyone, this is just some fairly lukewarm water. It doesn't need to be warm. Again, these animals don't like to be hot, okay? So we don't want it to be hot. It's not like we're trying to give this animal warm water like a bearded dragon's bath. Uh, just, it's not cold. It's a little bit, yeah, just room temperature water, essentially. Uh, we're going to clean each one off. So gently, the water level is not high. Obviously they're supervised. No animal is going to be unattended. We're just going to try and clean or wash the animal off. So gently gonna pick them up like that. And then gently going to lower them into the water, just like that. We wanna gently rub their body and get the all the soil that's caked on them off. Obviously this is a little bit stressful, but again, you can see that we have this little wound on the skink uh, and that's not the greatest thing. Uh, so this is actually the second individual this is not the one that we've already looked at. This is the other skink. Uh, and you can see right off the bat, we have some sort of little wound there on the dorsal dorsal front there. So it may, may require some medical attention. Um, but anyhow, for now, we're just gonna make sure it looks clean. I don't know what's going on there. Looks fairly clean for now, but washing off the body of the skink. I'm gonna gently lower them for a sec. Wow, this is a little bit like deja vu. Haven't done this in a very long time. I'm just gonna try and gently clean her face a little bit more because there's a lot of dirt still caked on her. You're okay, girl. Don't worry. I'm gonna take good care of you. You're gonna be just fine. Um, yeah, it's just a just gentle paper towel. We're just wiping some of the dirt off. Now, of course, I wanna kind of minimize stress, so I'm not gonna worry about getting all this off. Odds are it's gonna come off in the water dish if she tries to bathe anyways, when she's in the quarantine bin. But I do wanna just try to get a bit more of that off. It's easy enough, it's coming off pretty easy. So 
There you go, girly. There you go, sweet pea. We want to dry that area because this again is a wound. It's an open wound. We're worried about infection, things like that. I'm gonna dry off the skink just a bit like that. And now what I'm going to do, we're going to take this water away. Here is where the skink is gonna be housed. And we're gonna take a look at them again. Anywhere that we think not looking the way it should, clearly is this spot here. We're going, to we're going to apply a little bit of the colloidal silver. And what colloidal silver is very renowned for, according to Dr. Brown, it helps prevent bacterial infections. And it's, it's gentle enough to use that, uh, even you can use this for amphibians. I've used it before on my Suriname toads, if you saw the video there with uh, two of the animals that had a kind of bump on their face from hitting the lid when they were in tiny containers. So we're gonna apply some of that there, and that's good enough. There's nowhere else on the animal that seems to require it. So they're good to go. We can let them go into the home. Here you go. There's a hide right there if you want to go in there. Yay! There you go, girl. The other thing that colloidal silver is really good for, silversorb gel, is uh, stuck shedding. So if your animals have stuck shed, this stuff is a game changer. You just apply the gel all over the spot and it usually sloths off the stuck shed or helps restricted or constricted shedding. Uh, remember to use the gel, not the spray. I just don't, I've, I've seen people use a spray and it really doesn't work as well as the gel. So make sure if you're purchasing it, you buy the gel. Okay, so we're not quite done with this animal. We're now going to offer them some food in the worm dish. So while they're settling in, there's a good chance they're not gonna be interested in eating. However, we're going to put two superworms in here. The reason we use this worm dish is that we can perfectly monitor what food is in here. Naturally, in a bin like this, there's no food hiding anywhere really, but by limiting where the food can be to a worm dish, we can check in and see, oh, there's a there's a superworm missing. Uh, I just realized I forgot to do one very important thing. So I'm sorry, girl. I'm giving you a false taste of freedom of my my uh, handling. Sorry, baby. Uh, we're going to weigh this animal now. So we just have to quickly get our weight in. Once a week, we are going to weigh the skink. Set it up there. Okay, so 21 grams. So literally, it's as simple as setting up. Uh, literally, you can just do a croc skink uh, number number one. I can't actually see what I'm doing here. So there we go. Croc skink number one uh, grams. And as always, friends, we're going to take a quick break to sincerely thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. I'm so glad I'm doing it this way now. Thanks, Matt. Uh, that's definitely working a lot better than having some obscure thing in the background that's the same color as everything. Friends, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. Again, the best thing you can do to support the channel is by watching the videos. But for those of you looking to have more of a cool community-based relationship with me, as well as a direct line of communication, sneak peeks into future projects and more, Patreon might be the thing for you. For as little as $2 a month, you can unlock a whole skew of perks depending on the tier of support you choose and you'll get that community. There's pages where we talk about our pets that we have, we ask each other questions and more I answer. I do Q and A's that are exclusive for Patreon and more. If you're interested, check out the link down below in the video description. And as always, we do a shout out in upcoming content to thank the new patrons. So since I last did a shout out, we're thanking Annabelle, Sermon, or Sermon. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. I feel like this is a French, French pronunciation. Uh, Sermon or Sermon, but forgive me if it's just Sermon. I, I want to get it right, so I'm going to give your name that much attention. Uh, we have Buddy here, and then we have Marcus. So thank you guys for becoming my newest Patreon members. I look forward to conversing with you all there. See you all soon. And thank you to everyone else for your consideration. All right, now we're gonna bathe the last skink. Hopefully there are no unwanted surprises as to uh, physical issues that we need to be concerned about. This is the one we looked at already at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently place her in the water. Oh, you okay girl? And you can see all the soil that's coming off her body there. Again, we're just gently getting some of that off. I don't know if this is something, yeah, we might have to look into what's going on there with Dr. Brown. See, this is what I'm saying. Uh, these wild caught animals, right off the bat, are gonna set you up for some issues. Oh, I know, I know, this sucks. 
I agree, this sucks. So again, when you look at the feet closely here, you can see that this animal is clearly, clearly also a female skink. So there you go, you can see that they're female. He is missing a toenail. I just noticed that now. Again, yeah, it's something we have to watch out with. Make sure the toe is not uh, gonna get infected or anything like that. So oh, it right, looks like it's growing back funny enough. So it should be good. As long as the nail bed's still there. I'm gonna try and gently wipe her face off a bit again, because there's still some some dirt. But again, it's not really much. It's not even as bad as on the other animal. Okay. Silvazor time. Gloves come off, Silvazor comes on. Okay, we got our skink. Just gonna do a little free handling. If this was a more open wound than this, looks like it's already healing, I hope. Uh, I would wear gloves to not risk anything getting in it, just so you know. So we got a little bit of Slovazorb on a new fresh Q-tip. I'm just gonna rub that in like that, and that should be good. And we're gonna apply this, I forgot to mention. We're gonna apply this to these little wounds every day. Just once a day, you can even do twice a day, but that should help. So, there we go. Now, I want this video to be super meticulous and do things right as much as possible. If you see anything I'm doing wrong that you would advise against not doing, please tell me. But I'm going to also apply some rubbing alcohol to the scale uh, because we have put different wild caught animals over top of it. And I mean, I clean the scale every use anyways, but we want to make sure it's completely disinfected the surface before we weigh another animal. Here's the thing, if I'm being honest, probably overkill. These skinks all came from the same source. They are probably packaged all together. They might've been different deli cups, but odds are at some point in time, they were all just together in a big space. So it's kind of a, they all have the same shenanigans besides maybe particular nuance health issues. So it might be overkill, but again, we're not gonna take any chances. So. We'll let that sit for a bit, it'll be fine. Realistically, I could have left it longer, but... Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and weigh. This one's gonna be lighter. Yeah, by a lot, 16 grams. So we'll add that to the phone. We're gonna take our enclosure here and we'll put her in. For those of you that are unaware, you cannot cohabitate adult skinks unless you have a healthy male and female that you're introducing to keep together. You do not want to keep multiple females together. You definitely don't want to keep multiple males together. Please, please don't even try it. I promise you it's not gonna work. All right, girl, there you go. That's your new home. Here, boop, there you go. Perfect. All right, so now we're literally gonna take a few super worms like this one. And I'm gonna pick maybe a bit of a smaller one. There we go, smaller one. Now we're gonna dust them. Some Apache Calcium Plus, just like that. Very simple, give them a little shake, they're well coated. We're gonna remove our lid. And each skink will be given two soup worms in the dish. Perfect. All right. All right guys, so <laughs> you think that's it, eh? You think it's that easy? You got the bin set up, you're thinking, that, that wasn't so bad, I can acclimate wild caught skinks. Wrong, it's just starting. Now you gotta keep a close eye on each animal. Right now, your animals are set up properly. They have access to food and water, a shelter, they feel secure. If they're sorta of healthy, you'll be lucky, and you'll notice that within the next few days, some of that food's gonna go missing, and that's a great sign. It means they're happy, healthy, and eating. Assuming that that is your scenario, you're good to continue feeding the animals every three days or so, you can do two to three super worms. You can do a dozen mealworms. Maybe you can mix it up and offer three to four crickets. And then every day you want to change out the paper towel. Whether there's poop on it or not, clean the bin out with vinegar water solution or hot soapy water, even better. Put fresh paper towel down, wash out, scrub, clean the water dish and the feeding dish and the hide if you can. After about a month or two, you're gonna wanna do a parasite treatment before considering moving those animals into naturalistic vivaria. So that's the best case scenario if your animals start eating right off the get-go. Now, if they don't, here's what we're gonna need to do. Odds are, if your animals don't start eating within, let's say, four days, they're fine. If they don't eat in four days, that's okay. They're settling in. Remember, even though it's a bin, they still settle in the same way your other animals would settle into a big terrarium. There's probably one or two things going on. Crocodile skinks are notorious for coming into the hobby from the wild 
with sepsis or septicemia, the bacterial infection that's most notably characterized by a pink flush, as Dr. Brown would describe. And you'll see patches of pink, especially noticeable on animals with a white ventral area. It, it's like a pink flush, the bacteria in the body, it can become lethal very quickly. Or as you saw those sores, they could lead to a bacterial infection. So it's important we're keeping it clean and applying the Silvazorb, but things would be going on inside the animal that require antibiotic treatment. So in my experience, Dr. Brown recommended doing ceftazidine treatments. So it's not Batril, he recommended ceftazidine as a drug, and it's dosed by weight of the animal, of course, so you can talk to your veterinarian about that, and it's a subcutaneous injection. So you're gonna do that safely. Please skip ahead if you're queasy about needles. I totally respect it. I am when it comes to drawing blood for myself, so I get it, but not with this footage, but anyway, everybody's different. And the most common reason for the animals not thriving and not eating is a skew of parasites affecting their digestive system. So usually it's, it's a high amount of worms that are in the gut affecting the animal that leads to a lack of appetite. So what we recommend doing is a parasite treatment. Usually the most common one used is fenbendazole, is the active drug commonly in the market known as Panicure. And this drug is used to treat worm parasites. So usually doing a fenbendazole treatment, again by weight, and again only through your vet. There are people that do all kinds of sketchy stuff where they go buy it in bulk and it's like in concentrated form and then they, they try to dilute it themselves. Just please don't do that. Go to your veterinarian, do it the right way. Please be safe. Don't buy horse parasite medicine and think you can dose it for your lizard. Go to your vet, make sure you have a reptile vet. That's another thing. You need to have a good reptile vet that you can trust and get the medication from. With regards to the Panicure treatment, the Fenbendazole, it's an oral drug and these animals are not easy to feed anything forcefully. There's not much of a lip to, to pull down or, or get a syringe in their mouth with. But what works for me, funny enough, for all you musicians out there, is I found using a guitar pick works really well. If you're not careful and you, you kind of push too hard, you can make the gum line bleed and you don't want to do that. As long as you have the length of the pick against the mouth, I mean, there's footage here, you'll see it. Uh, and then you just kind of tilt it and then they'll open their mouth a bit and then you quickly get the syringe in, administer the dose, Bob's your uncle. So friends, it's, it's not that simple. There's a lot involved and there are circumstances where you lose the animal and I really don't want that to happen to anyone. That's why this video is important. I'm trying to give the best advice possible. And then over time, as you continue to monitor the weights of the animals, you'll see the weight gradually go up. If you're lucky, uh, set up your phone with a time lapse. You might catch them coming out and eating. I like to see that they're active and moving around eating. It's a reassuring thing. Buy a cheap tripod. I'll put links down below for the tripod. And then yeah, just set your phone up for like two hours as soon as you put food in. They'll come out and eat, especially if it's at dusk. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best. This is not the easiest thing. Again, another reason why we really should just support Captive Bread as much as possible but all those kinks coming in need to be set up right. And so I realized it's of the utmost importance that this more specific video be created as a guideline for people to have the best success rate in acclimating these ball caught skinks. And here you go, you're gonna do great. So if you wanna see more videos pertaining to keeping project mini dragon skinks, red eye crocodile skinks, check out the playlist up above here for the whole series and my experience with the animals. Thank you again for bearing with me with this cold. Hopefully I'll sound a bit more normal next week in the videos there. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye everybody. See you soon.